All right, guys and girls, welcome back to the channel. And this is a video that's been kind of requested, and I did one this summer uh, for lake trout. And during the ice fishing season, lake trout are completely different. So let's go over my tips and tricks on how I catch lake trout on like Lake Winnipesaukee, for example. I'm gonna use that as my like target lake, the one I discussed the most in this video. Um, there's a lot of lakes in New Hampshire and around New England that have the same type of lake trout, basically. They feed on the same forage. So that forage being smelt. So let's go over where to find lake trout. So during the winter time, lake trout basically rule the water column. They can go anywhere they want. They can go all the way down from 200 feet deep where I fished them in Sebago uh, over in Maine. And the shallowest I've caught of here in New Hampshire is probably 20 feet. So they can go wherever they want. The water is pretty much all the same temperature. It's colder towards the surface and it's actually warmer down to the bottom. So lake trout control the water calm. All this like mythology or all, you've always heard like lake trout go super deep and stuff like that. They're, they are super deep in the winter time. They can be, but most of the time they're following the bait. Wherever that bait is, that's where they're going to be. So they can be um, up shallow. They can be in bays. They can be in humps, all sorts of stuff. So let's I'm gonna show you the things that I look for on Navionics, and I'll put up Navionics, the word right here. Navionics.com, Navionics.com is also an app that you can download. There is a free version, and then there's a paid version that gives you a couple more features. I don't even bother with the paid version. The free version is really good for these bigger lakes. So that's always good. So let me show you uh, a couple places where I find them. Uh, one of the places I find them are in like 30 foot, kind of like flat basins. That's because the smelt are there, so let me, talk about most of the lake trout in Winnipesaukee are eating some sort of smelt. There's pin smelt that are, let me show you with my gloves on, like this big, and then there's big smelt that are like, you know, yay big. I'm gonna put up a video right now that I filmed in the 2021 of lake trout rainbows, and I think salmon chasing smelt underwater. Once I did film that with the Aquaview, that's in like 48 foot of water. Once I filmed that, I'm like, I am using jigs and bait that are too big. So they can be in those basins, uh, depending on if the bait's there or not. They can be on humps. So let me show you a hump, like a Navionics uh, view of a hump right now. Right now I'm actually on a hump on the middle of Lake Winnipesaukee. It's at uh, 42 feet, the top, and then it kind of dips down um, all around me basically, especially an underwater mountain. And what happens with lake trout is they actually use these mountains as like underwater ambush points where they can swim up all sides and basically pin smelt to the bottom of the ice, basically. Smelt swim pretty fast, so if lake trout are pretty lazy, they want to pin them against something. So the bottom of the ice, or another thing they can do is they pin them on inside turns. So kind of like coves or kind of like small bays between two points, they'll kind of corral them in there and eat them in there. So that's another one I'll show you, like a Navionics point of that, basically a little cove. Uh, the other place that I can find them, and I don't like to fish these areas, are steep drop off ledges. The problem with ledges is with traditional sonars without the live imaging on it, you have a very big dead spot. So I'm gonna use uh, this as my straight edge. If you have a ledge that, that comes up that's a flat and then it drops down and drops down and drops down, your sonar is gonna shoot down like a, basically an ups, upside down ice cream cone. It's gonna pick this dead point, this top point right here as your bottom and then all the rest of down here is gonna be a dead point. So you can't see, I just missed the fish. Uh, you can't see those fish coming in until it's already too late or they might be just glued to the bottom. You're not seeing them at all. Just missed one guys. Oh, there's another one with them. Small one. I got three fish on the screen right now. So that's where I found a lot of the fish. Like I said, I don't like really fishing ledges, so I just missed fish there, there, and I'll explain what I'm doing right now on top of this hump. So I don't like fishing ledges. What I do like fishing is flats, inside turns, and humps. So somewhere where I can easily see with the down, down view on the sonar. I am using a Hummingbird Helix. I like the Helix units better than flasher units because they actually show history of how the fish is reacting. Compared to a flasher unit, if he's just there and there, you just you don't remember what he was doing or she was doing. So that's where to find them. So now that we found the fish, I gave you the my four four spots, types of areas to look for structure-wise, or no structure at all sometimes. 
let's go over the baits real quick. So like I showed you guys before, those smelts are not very big. They're like this, this long all the way up to, you know, four or five inches. Uh, they do get pretty big in some other lakes. This is my number one bait that I use, and I'll show it to you right now. And I do sell these, so if you want to get some, send me a DM on this video via Facebook or Instagram below. This is what's called, I call it just a crappy jig. So this is a, uh, a white sassy shad with a number four seven millimeter tungsten jig. See how tiny that is? That whole plastic's two inches long, and then the hook is just a super rugged little hook. I'll leave the link for the hooks below, and actually you can buy them through me if you'd like. Um, and that plastic is just a simple little tiny paddle tail. Now I use them in white, well, this, is, this is the pearl white. I use them in glow, and I use them in a chartreuse color, which I actually dye. But I, I am selling all three. So this is my predominant bait. I will use a couple other baits that glow in the dark. Now this is a chartreuse glow head. One of the things I always carry with me is a glow light. So this is a UV glow light, or it's actually a curing light to when I, uh, when I use for fly tying. I will glow that jig, and that jig will actually glow in the dark. So I'll use this. This is my, uh, my probably my smallest size that I'll use. I'll use bigger patterns if I'm going for a little bit bigger fish. But most of the fish in Winnie are cookie cutter, like 2018 to like 22 inches, 24. I've caught some 25s. In general, if this is a, a numbers bait right here. If you want to go bigger fish, go bigger bait. Basically the same style, kind of a paddle bait. Now I have caught them with spoons before. They have to be wanting spoons. But they'll always, always, almost always chase these little paddle tail baits. They just absolutely love them to death. And like I said, you can buy them from me. So that's my number one bait. Now I'll show you my, uh, my rod setup. It's a little unconventional for when Lake Winnipesaukee, a lot of people use like light medium rods. I used to use those until I realized that you really need to set the hook in these guys. So I'm using a clam Dave Gens split handle 40, try not to lose the thing down here, 40 heavy. So this is a 40 inch rod, a 3000 series reel, 10 pound power pro line, and a, uh, there's a fish down there right now, and a eight pound six pound to eight pound, sometimes 10, depending on what I'm doing. A fluorocarbon leader that's probably 12 feet long. And I will do a uni to uni knot. And when I tie on the jig, I almost always use a polymer knot. It's one of those knots that just, they just work. It always works. And even if you tie it crappily, like if your hands are cold, the knot is still really good compared to a couple other knots that you can tie where they look good and then they break off almost immediately sometimes. Now that's what I have on my main rod pretty much all the time, all the way through the winter. I will mix up the plastics a little bit if they're being really finicky and I can trim the belly on that one down a little bit if I want to. But what I have on another rod, so this is just a, a medium rod and it's got like eight pound monofilament on there or nylon on there. I will tie in some sort of rattle trap, uh, which I'll show you right now. So you guys don't know what I'm talking about. Some sort of rattle trap which has a, has a bunch of rattles in it. That's what they call it, a rattle trap, and it's shiny. So it'll flicker down there. It makes a lot of noise down there. Or I'll tie in a bucktail or something heavy. So this is a, like a three quarter ounce or yeah, or actually maybe an ounce, 1.01 ounces for the state of New Hampshire. Then I will pound bottom or rip. That is to make noise. If there's no lake trout in your area, they are super addicted to noise. It's like, we need to go figure out what that is right now. So I will, have that tied on my other rod. I very rarely do I set up a, a live shiner or smelt somewhere. One, it's expensive. Two, I like to bounce around a lot. If the fish aren't there, they're not there. Let's go somewhere else. That's my mindset. So I'll use those and I'll pretty much always either, I'll always be either pounding bottom or doing something down there. There's one other trick that you can do is you can take your electric auger and you can run it in reverse down the hole. What that does is it makes a ton of noise in the area and fish are really drawn to that. Um, it's a secret that uh, I'm giving away in this video and this video only. So if you don't see this video, you're not gonna know that special secret. And that's why when you drill a new hole in a new spot, almost always you'll drop down and there's a fish there immediately. So drill a hole, get your rod ready to go down immediately. Fish will be in there in like the first few seconds almost always. 
at least a minute or two. Um, that's one of the reasons I'll move a bunch. Drill a hole, see fish, hook that fish, bring them up, go to the next spot. One of the other things that I like to do, if you're camping in an area or setting up a tent or, or, a, or a hard side or something like that, or in a flip over or you're on foot and you don't want to move that often, is I like to chum. And if it's legal to do in your state, not all states are it's legal to chum, uh, take whatever forage that you have in the lake. So shiners or smelts or suckers in this case, chop them up, get them so they sink down the hole, chop them up into edible bites, throw them down the hole and don't over chum. And if you have current in your lake, what you want to use is a uh, chum pot. Basically it's a copper ice cream cone with a little gate on the bottom of it. I'll put up a picture right now. But you basically lower that chum down and you yank on the rope and it opens up and drops the chum in a very tiny little pile. That way it's not all spread apart and the fish aren't, you know, down current from you when you want them right underneath you. So that that is a good way to have them smell what's in the area and know that there's something going on. So noise and smell, they just love that stuff. So we talked about location, we talked about baits, we talked about gear. Uh, you can use a, a medium rod or a medium heavy rod, that's fine too. Um, I pretty much always practice catch and release. So I want to get those fish up and back down as fast as possible. Lake trout have the ability to burp, so I'm not worried about them getting the uh, the bends or basically or, or bear trauma on the way up. All right, let's talk about uh, techniques. So, so my screen's not very clean, but what I want to show you guys is the the three techniques that I do. So one one of the easiest ones to do is to take your jig, and I'll show you. This is the flasher view, so way over here, way over here is bottom, and also here is bottom. So I'm showing both views. I like this view because you can see history. So you can see that I lift up and go back down. Actually, there's probably a fish down there right now, if I was to guess. So one of the easiest tricks you can do is drop your drake all the way down to the bottom, all the way until your line is slack. So I'll just show you my rod tip will be up here so you guys can see it all the way down to the bottom and you're just going to do little tiny little tiny bunny hops like you're doing like kind of like a little tiny circle basically like in the palm of your hand size and what that's doing is that that jig is going like that down the bottom and it looks like something's eating some bugs or worms and stuff off the bottom of the lake sometimes a lake trout will just come and slam that it depends what their mood is my second one that I like doing, that I just started doing a lot more, is dead sticking. Where I'll actually bring the lure up, and I'm not sure why I have so much noise today, but it might be current where I am. But what I'll do is I'll actually set the rod down on something so I don't touch it, and I'll bring it three, four feet off bottom. Now that depends on the clarity of your lake. Lake Winnipesaukee is very clear. It's one of the reasons I use a 12 foot leader. Very clear. What that's going to do is that's going to look like a smelt that's just kind of like chilling there. And what lake trout are doing is they're basically belly scrubbing the bottom. And what they're doing is they're not looking down. They look, they're smelling down. This is my, my personal feeling. They're smelling down and they're looking up for stuff. So if they see a school of smelt, they're going to come screaming up to us. So what you want to do is you want to watch your flash or your sonar. And this is my jig right here up at uh say 34 feet and i'm down at 40 feet at the bottom i'm just going to leave it there and i'm not going to touch it a lot of times what will happen is a lake trout or multiple lake trout in this case i've had three or four fish coming at once but i'm talking to you guys so i've missed a couple come screaming off the bottom and what you want to do is either dead stick it well put it pull it in your hands so you can set the hook they'll either slam it immediately or what you want to do is when they come up to it is you're gonna to want to reel. You're gonna to want to reel, 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 reel. And they'll actually chase after it. They absolutely love chasing stuff. Most of the time. And if they're chasing and they're like starting to like fall off, slow down your bait, speed up your bait, kind of act erratic. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll kind of like bump the bait and they think they like hit it. And so dead stick it again and they'll come back and hit it. That's what I found works the best. So that's dead stick and chase. So we have bottom bounce, we have dead stick and chase. And then my favorite one 
which works better when they're really fired up, is going all the way down to the bottom and just start chases. Just reel, reel, reel all the way to the surface. This works better when you're in a shack and you have heat and your lines aren't all freezing up. Bring it all the way to the surface and then drop it back down again. That's all you gotta do. This searches the water column. It lets fish see that you're in the area or you're here. And if they're there, you better watch your screen because they'll come in screaming. I've accidentally caught salmon doing this and rainbows. You'll just see stuff randomly in the water column that you wouldn't see otherwise because they'll actually, they're actually gonna see your bait. Um, because they can actually see farther than you think, especially in these clear waters. So that's my favorite one. The chase is the best, because it, it seems like you've caught a lot of fish in one day, but all you had was chases all day and no, no commitments. So those are my three favoritest ways to uh, like interact with lake trout once I do see them. Bottom pound, have that second rod down that this has something big and heavy on it. I've actually gotten to the point where I've had a rope and put my spud bar and pounded my spud bar in the bottom and within a couple of minutes, lake trout come screaming in. They just are attracted to noise because they can't, well, they can see pretty far, but they're just kind of like roaming around looking for food. So if they hear something, they're gonna come over to it. So like I said, a lot of this is based on Lake Winnipesaukee and the lakes around New Hampshire where the main forage is smelt. And then it goes smelt and white perch and yellow perch and rock bass and cusk, whatever else lake trout can basically get their hands on. You watch these guys up in Canada, so Uncut Angling, Jay Siemens, uh, Clayton Schick, where they're using like, you know, 12 inch Cisco's and stuff like that. These giant fish, bait fish basically to them. We don't have those down here. We don't have anything like that. We do have white fish, but it's, it's extremely rare. Take the same concept and scale it up to that size. So use big white tubes. Um, I'll put up a picture of a white tube right, right now. I have caught them there in the summer, caught them on those in the summertime. But I think that's all my tips and tricks that I've done so far from catching them in the summertime and the winter time. And like I said, do not rule out anywhere in the water column for lake trout during the winter time. They can go wherever they want. The water's all cold. Um, best thing you can do is I'm gonna talk about a little bit of the handling real quick. If it's above freezing, your main goal is to get the fish out of the water and unhooked and back in in under 10 seconds. That is a goal for you guys. That is uh, coming from keep fish wet. Anything longer than that, there's basically like permanent brain damage to, uh, to fish. And when it's super cold outside, right now it's probably, I think it's probably 15, 16 degrees outside. Those gill filaments and those eyes will freeze over, uh, especially the colder it is. If it's warmer out, you don't have to be as concerned, but you know, hook a fish, reel it up as fast as you can. Don't overplay the fish, have your buddy or have your camera on a quick timer, keep that fish in the water as much as possible, take a quick pick, get him right back down the hole. Unless you're keeping them, then you can kind of do whatever you want with them. Um, but yeah, like I, I practice catch and release. I don't really keep that many fish because they're kind of worth more to me alive than dead because if I caught all the fish and ate them all, then uh, you guys wouldn't see that much. So I think that's all my tips and tricks. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope this video is helpful to somebody, if you guys have any more tips and tricks that you guys do, um, leave them in the comments below. This channel is all about sharing and sharing my journey through, uh, through fishing and giving back to you guys. So thank you very much. Till next time. And if you guys have any questions, also leave them in the comments below.